Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well out there. This video is going to be a video of a few different cameras that I'm going to show you using this mirror and this sink, the field of view. So check it out and I'm not editing the sound or the picture quality. Now I have the Sony ZV-1 that I'm holding with the newer add-on lens and I'm trying to hold it really steady because I only have the standard image stabilization turned on and that really doesn't crop it at all. It really, it really doesn't do much for stabilization either. But I am going to turn on the active stabilization in a few seconds. But first I want to say that I'm not going to change the picture quality when the video gets edited. I'm just going to kind of paste everything together and maybe cut the video a bit if I need to. And I'm also not going to change the sound. So each camera is going to be either louder or lower. And right now I have the Sony microphone set to about, I believe it was 23 or 24, where I left it on the game. And I do want to point out that I think that at this point, if the Sony, what is it, the ZV-E10, I believe it is, if that was out when this camera was, was out at the same time, I would have purchased that instead because with that camera, you can connect a lot more of the Sony microphones that go up on the top where I'm pointing to and you can also change out the lens. So that would be a much better camera and being filmed at 1080, 60 frames per second. Okay, now this is with active steady shot turned on and you can see that it, it cropped in a whole bunch. I'm still standing in the same location. I got the, the shower divider behind me and I'm standing in the same place on the floor. And you could see how much more it's cropped in. I mean, it looks like it's, you know, a good, um, you know, 10, 15% or more cropped in now. But still, with this newer lens, it's still much wider than it would have been without it. So, and the active steady shot is better. Um, I don't think that either of these is really acceptable. Um, if, if you're thinking about making a video where you're going to be walking around, if you're going to be walking around, then you want something like a GoPro or um, a DJI camera or something like that. I just think that at this point, Sony needs much better image stabilization than, um, than what these cameras have. Okay, so this is the GoPro Hero 9 Black. And the GoPro Hero 9 Black is set to the horizon leveling mode. And I forget what they call this again. I think it's linear. I think it's linear field of view with horizon leveling. Um, I don't really like any of the fisheye views on any camera. And I know, and I also don't like when action cameras you use image stabilization where it's, it, it kind of feels like you're on a boat. So that's why the horizon leveling is on. And you could see I'm tilting the camera and it holds it relatively reasonably you know, so that's kind of nice. Now you could see that it's a more cropped in field of view. It's a little bit closer to how the Sony was with the active stabilization turned on, but this stabilization is much better. With that said, the problem with the GoPro cameras is that, is that they are buggy. And this particular one, the Hero 9 Black had issues with audio popping where it'd be like pop, pop, pop. And that's usually within the first two minutes of shooting. Um, the other issue that it would have would be random shutdowns. Uh, and it would say like a um, problem with the memory card, even though the memory card is certified from uh, GoPro. And then I would put in a different memory card and it would still say, oh, memory card issue, you know, different brand and whatever. And so, you know, it, it just kind of, you know, random bugs these things have. So that's kind of the field of view. And let me just kind of pull it back a little bit more close to my chest as possible. So yeah, so that's what it looks like. That's the field of view with the GoPro with horizon leveling on linear mode. And you know, you could shake it. So, you know, you could shake the camera and you know, it holds, it holds steady, which is good. So that's why something like this would be my choice for outdoor like vlogging instead of the Sony camera. And I think that the microphone on this, uh, the built-in mic is uh, very decent as well. 
I mean, none of the built-in mics are amazing, but I do think it's decent. All right, so this is the DJI Action 3. And you can see the field of view. Now this is with the horizon, horizon balancing, what they call it, and I believe it's 45 degrees turned on. So that's your field of view. And you can see when you tilt it, which kind of like the GoPro until you get to a certain point, then it flips. So it's about the same. Um, I think that the, the field of view on this camera though is wider and I think that you could see that looking at the mirror, looking at the sink. Now the microphone on this I don't think is as good as the GoPro, the built-in mic. I think that the GoPro has a better sound. So again, I'm not going to change any sound um, in the uh, post-production. I'm not going to change the leveling of it either. The volume is going to stay. It's going to be exactly the same as if you took it out of the camera and you just put it on your computer and you watched it. So there's not going to be any changes. So that's pretty much it. And you can see when I shake it, shaking it in the mirror, you know, that's what you get. So again, I think this, this bathroom mirror is a great, is a great judge of the field of view. Great way to judge it for yourself. Let me know what you think in the comments. And this is 1080p, 60 frames, like all the other cameras. And this is the DJI Pocket 2, and probably my favorite camera, and probably the only one that I really don't have any complaints about. I think that the microphones that are built in are excellent sounding, and it's, it's good at night with any type of night shooting or or shooting like indoor light. I think it's, it's very good at that, and it's, um, especially for the size. And the field of view on it is decent. It could be better. I'm hoping that the Pocket 3 improves upon it. I do have the little lens attachment that I'm going to put on in just a bit. And this is 1080-60 that it's shooting at. So let's look down a little. And you can see, you know, the field of view is not so great. Compared to some of the action cameras, it's a little bit, it's a little bit more narrow, but it's not terrible by any means. I do enjoy taking it pretty much everywhere because I know that I can go indoors with it or outdoors, and the audio is 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 really excellent. When I watch videos on my computer, I don't have to really make any type of audio adjustments. I don't really like to. I like to just you know record something and save it, and that's it. I don't like to waste my life and. Um, uh, post-production. So I'm going to put the lens on now and you could take a look at it. Okay, so again, this is the Pocket 2 and this time I have the lens attachment on it. You can take a look. You can see there's that, that lens attachment. And I think that if, if, if they can make the, uh, the, uh, the DJI 3 with this type of field of view from the start, I think that that would be fantastic. Or, or potentially make it with like this field of view, but then allow people to still use this lens and put it on top of that, and then it pulls it in um, even more. Or should I say, takes the image and pulls it back in a, in a very wide field of view. And I should point out that one of the modes that I like about this is the first person view mode, whereas the Femi Palm only has like a follow mode. It doesn't have this mode. And I like this mode because this mode is more like a camera and moves around like, like as though you, let me grab this, like as though you have, you know, one of these action cameras and you're going like this and you're moving it around. It pretty much functions the same way without any, any type of that strange um, follow mode that a lot of gimbals have. I don't really care for that mode. So, you know, I can move this around and it's gonna, again, it's gonna be like I'm holding like a, like a, a camera that has, has more of a stationary lens. Okay, so this is the Femi Palm 2 Pro, and this is at 1080p at 60 frames per second. I just want you to see this field of view because the only way to get the super wide field of view with this camera is to use one of the 30 frame per second modes. So 1080, 
um, 30 will do, or a 1080, um, excuse me, or 2.7K at 30, or 4K at 30. So you can see that there. Um, I do have a few issues with this camera. The microphone, I find it to be kind of messed up at times, like the left and right channel, like it'll sound like, like, like there were times that I recorded and the audio was only coming out of like the right speaker and not the left. Um, or the sound was just pretty bad in general on this. I think it's, it's the worst um, uh, camera that I have as far as the built-in audio goes. It's pretty bad. And the other thing is when this camera is being used with the very wide mode, which you're going to see in a minute, then it kind of looks distorted. Like it looks like it's being um, corrected. And I believe that there was a setting that I turned on to um, uh, correct the image um, or correct the distortion or something like that. So it just doesn't look very nice as well. Let's switch over to that. Okay, so there we go. 30 frames per second, 1080p. Or should I say 1080, 30. So you can see just how wide it is. And it's a really, really wide field of view. The field of view is kind of decent um, when you're stationary, but I find that when you're moving, things look kind of kind of um, uh, distorted, and it looks like it's trying to correct it as well. So, you know, just keep that in mind if you think about purchasing this camera. And again, you can only shoot this wide at 30, any of the 30 modes, 1080, 2.7K, or 4K. It's got to be 30. You can't use 60, otherwise you're going to get the image that you just saw. And what do you think of the audio? How does it sound to you? I'm going to pull it back to my chest. And you can probably see it's, it looks to me in this little viewer that it's bending right in the viewer. So I'm sure you're probably seeing that as well. And again, the uh, correction for that is turned on. I guess it's trying to correct the fish eye. Now the audio is bad, but it does have right here, there's a, a jack to plug in a mic. And I don't know how well that works. Haven't tested it. All right, so this is the Sony ZV-1 with the standard image stabilization, which it really doesn't crop anything in, but it also really doesn't do much. I don't really know if it does anything. I, I, I flipped back and forth a few times between the no stabilization and the standard I don't really notice a difference, to be perfectly honest. Maybe it's mild. Um, you know, if, if I'm using the camera on a tripod, then typically I just leave the standard turned on because maybe it eliminates very tiny shakes. But I think in a situation like this, I mean, um, you know, it's pretty damn shaky, you know, and I am trying to, you know, hold my arm steady. Um, if I do try to shake it, I mean, you know, that's, that's terrible. And it's going to lead to motion sickness. Um, the active stabilization, which, which you're going to see right now coming up, that stabilization is much better, but at the same time, it's not very good compared to cameras like a GoPro or a DJI or one of the other action cameras or um, a gimbal camera. Okay, so this is the Sony ZV-1 with the newer lens and I'm at arm's length. And this is with the active stabilization turned on. So this is the best stabilization that the camera has. And this is probably the one that you would use if you are thinking about walking around with this thing, um, you know, without like using a gimbal. Um, but, you know, the stabilization on this isn't nearly as good as something that's an action, you know, should I say something like an action camera, like a GoPro or um, one of the gimbal cameras or something like that. Okay, so this is the GoPro Hero 9 Black. And I'm at arm's length, and you could see the field of view, it's nice and wide. Not quite as wide as some of the other cameras, like the DJI Action 3. I have to think about this. Is it the Action 3 or is it the Pocket? Um, but, it, you know, it's a nice wide field of view, and, you know, these cameras are nice and 
stable as far as image stabilization, unlike the Sony ZV-1, which is, is just horribly shaky, even on the best stabilization. Okay, so here's the Action 3 camera. I'm at arm's length. Maybe you can see it in the mirror, maybe you can't, but I'm at arm's length. You can see the field of view, how wide it is. Really nice field of view. Okay, so this is the Femi Palm 2 at 1080-30. And again, this is the widest field of view that this camera can produce at 30 frames per second. Or less, or less, I should say, because at 24, it's also wide. But when you go to 60 frames, that's when it pulls in a lot. So again, this is the Palm 2, and hopefully you can see it in the mirror. That's the Palm 2 Pro. And you can see the field of view. It's definitely a wide field of view, but yeah, usually there's some distortion with this that I pick up on when I'm looking at it. Um, so, I mean, it's... It's wide, but it's not the greatest. I think that you have to kind of be okay with like a fisheye type of effect in order to still appreciate it. I personally don't like fisheye. I don't like when the, um, you know, like when the background is bending or looking warped. So not exactly for me. Okay, so the Femi Palm 2 Pro again, but now it's 60 frames and you can see I'm at arm's length and it's just really, you know, it's pulled in now. So I think it's at 60 frames, this is more like the Pocket 2 from DJI. So it's, it's not bad, but it's not as good as some of the other ones. Okay, so again, that's the Femi Palm 2 Pro. So here's the Pocket 2, and again, you can see the field of view. I'm holding it at, at arm's length. And I do think it's probably about the same as the Femi Palm 2 Pro. Okay, so it doesn't matter on, on this, on the pocket, you could be at 60 or you could be at 30 and the field of view is the same. I'm going to put the lens on this now, um, the lens attachment to make the field of view a little bit wider. Okay, so this is the DJI Pocket 2. And this has the lens attachment on it. So you can see it's definitely wider. It looks like it's about 10%, I don't know, maybe 10, maybe 15% wider or something like that. Hard to tell, but it, you know, it's definitely wider. And I do hope again that the Pocket 3 comes with this type of field of view as like the standard field of view. That would be fantastic. And then if you could put this lens on top of it and it makes it even a little bit wider, that would really be great. So again, this is the Pocket 2 from DJI. Probably my, probably my favorite camera of the bunch. What do you think about these cameras? Let me know in the comments. If you own them, let me know your opinion. And thanks for watching. Have yourselves a great day.